love movies, and I try to see as many movies as I possibly can. All sorts, of all kinds, and... I try not to alienate any, like, I'm not the type to alienate certain types of movies. Like, there are some people who won't watch musicals, and some who will not watch horror movies. I love both horror and musicals. Horror is... has been for most of my life my favorite movie genre. And I just love a good musical that does it well, that has good singing and dancing. But... And I feel a little bad about this, because I feel like, as someone who likes to review movies, watch movies, talk about movies, and analyze movies, I should see all kinds, and... There is a certain type of movie that I generally don't watch, really, because I am... Um, have a lot of hard, heavy feelings about it. That would be religious movies. I'm an atheist, and I really have a lot, I've had a lot of pretty negative feelings towards religion over the years, and extreme religious people, zealots, evangelists, uh, just people that shove religion in your face and who try to tell you how to live your life and what kind of person you should be and what is right, what is wrong in life. I've... I just... I've had a lot of bad feelings about those type of people over the years and I'm older, and I think I've become more mature these in these uh, past two or three years, and I'm at a point where I really hate organized religion, and I have a lot of negative feelings towards deep believers who just uh, believe in it above everything else and put their ideas of what their religion represents above everything else and I'm at a point where I think if you believe in a certain religion or faith and it makes you happy and and it helps you get through your life with all the hardships that come with life, I say believe what you want to believe and I don't believe in that stuff, but I'm not going to force my opinion on those who believe, and I say either choose to believe or not to believe. But at the same time, I've come to a point also where I can really like movies that have some religious uh, tones to them because a lot of the films I like actually have a lot of religious tones to them such as uh, Dogma by Kevin Smith I think that that's a pretty amazing hilarious but also makes you think type of movie and the Indiana Jones movies excluding the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull they all are pretty much, the original trilogy, they're all pretty much based around looking for artifacts related to religion. And a movie that I really like that is pretty religious and is based on a biblical story is Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ.
This movie is pretty amazing, pretty incredible, and so many people have talked about this movie and exactly how to interpret it and what it means. This movie is very intense, very violent, very gory, and but it's not, and maybe some people call it torture porn gory, but I don't really see it like that, like, I feel like it's important to the story in the movie, such as Saving Private Ryan, like, it's very violent, especially in the first half hour, but it's essential to the story it's trying to tell, and I feel like Passion has the same effect in a way, because I haven't seen the movie in very recently. I did watch it in the past year, but I haven't watched it very recently, but at the same time, like Saving Private Ryan, the story and the intensity and the violence, it leaves a lasting impression on you. Some people who have seen it say that the passion changed their lives. It didn't do that to me, but at the same time, it stuck with me, and I also I really like the story that it tells, and I don't believe the story about Jesus actually happened, but it can be very powerful. Like, people who tell it, like, depending on how they tell it movie-wise, it can be a very powerful movie. Mel Gibson is a devout Catholic, a very strong believer. He believes it actually happened. And that kind of can help a movie like this. It can uh, make it more powerful, more personal, and it, the whole thing was very personal to him. And uh, the movie, as I said, like, it's very intense. Like, it's not a film you should show to little kids. Like, a lot of churches have a tendency to show very disturbing and scary biblical-themed movies to little children. Usually traumatizes them or makes them very scared or insecure for most of their life. I didn't see The Passion of the Christ when I was very little, but I saw it when I was still kind of young. I saw it seven years ago when I was 13, and it was pretty, it's pretty funny pretty... I was... here's how I saw The Passion of the Christ really for the first time. In 2008, I, like, for most of my life, me and my family went to Disney World, and... and before we'd fly out, me and... like, I'd always go there with my grandparents first. Usually, we'd go from a hotel where we'd spend the night before we left, and... The night before we left, like, I was flipping through the channels, just seeing what was on, and I came across Passion of the Christ. It was on Showtime, I think. And we was already halfway into it, half the movie had gone by, but I just got hooked into seeing it. And, I, and it was extremely powerful, even then at that age, where I was... I was... Not fully as mature in some areas as I am now, but I could see some pretty intense fucking movies back then, and I could see them without being goofy or retarded about it. But yeah, I saw The Passion of the Christ when I was 13 on TV in a hotel room with my grandparents, and I just got pulled into the movie. and. Around that time, like, when I was a little kid, I did kind of believe in God and stuff. Not because I was really into it or religious. I'd never really been religious all my life. But my mom, but when I was little, I believed in God mainly because my mom believes. Most of my family actually believes in this stuff. And my mom, my mom told me that heaven was real and God and shit. And... And being a little kid, like, little kids will believe anything you tell them. Being a little kid, I believed her. And... But as I got older and I started to see... I started to... When I, as I got older, I started to just drift away from that to the point where I didn't really care. And then I started reading about 
all the bad things that happen due to religion and people who take religion in very bad directions. And I'm bisexual, so yeah, being religious doesn't really go with the LGBT community. But as an adult, I, I, really, I really love... I just, I love movies, and this movie is considered a must-see classic. This movie is in this book called The 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die. I was curious to see it again because it had really been a great film when I was 13. I had hesitations about seeing it again because I was older and... I just really had a lot of hateful feelings towards religion at that point. So about a year ago, I saw the movie at a store and I bought it and I watched it and it's still an amazing powerful film because like the story about Jesus from the Bible it is, it, like when you come down to it, it's a pretty simple story. It's about a world full of horrible people and this guy who believes that he can help them and he doesn't give up despite all the horrible, awful things they put him through. And he's just strong enough to get through it. And the way the, the Passion of the Christ does these scenes, it's heartbreaking, it's just... It just makes you want to cry. It, it just so it's just so horrible to watch. Like this movie had seen. This movie has some of the most realistic, uh, probably some of the most realistic hand, like violence you've ever seen. I've ever seen. Like the gore, the brutal beating scenes. They are just horrible to watch. And I think if the movie has any major. Less, if it had any major lessons that it gave to me, it's that human beings are horrible fucking people. They are awful, like... And I, I really have a lot of bad feelings towards other people, and I just... I think that's the mess. That's the message that I got from this. And it leads me to think... It led me to think while watching it, these people don't deserve to be saved, but... People say that's the message that is in the Bible, and I've never been really religious, even when I was little, and I've never read the Bible, so I don't know a ton about every little aspect of it, but my mom, my grandparents, they've uh, been raised in religious uh, families and surroundings, so they know a lot about this stuff, and they are who I've gone to to figure some of the key scenes and aspects of these type of movies to better understand them. The movie is j the film is an incredible experience. Like even when I was a 13 year old kid, what I saw was great acting of human behavior, even in this setting. Like, when Jesus is being beaten and whipped and just tortured, he doesn't just be strong and take it all the way without, like, I've heard the most mo or movies about Jesus, like, a lot of movies, I haven't seen a lot of movies about Jesus, but I hear, like, this is one of the more portrayals of him where they try to make the Jesus character more human in his pain because he doesn't go through it all strong he cries and he almost he collapses at a few times due to all the pain and it is so hard to watch but it is very so well done and also when I was 13 even then I could see this movie was extremely well shot like Mel Gibson I think he's a great director. He knows how to just picture something and make it look fucking beautiful, like amazing. It's just, it can be very, like he, 
He knows how to direct the scenery all around him. And I heard that they shot in Italy and the, the uh, country that they have, the cities, and it is just breathtaking imagery. It was just great and it's a great movie. Great, it's a great film and I feel that even though I'm an atheist, I was still able to really like it as a movie and the story itself, like, even if you don't believe in it, it can be good as a, just as a story about someone who doesn't give up and does everything for people who don't deserve it because he believes in them and it's frustrating at times because you feel like why does he believe but I get the message and the movie was great when I was younger I guess that carried all the way to me as an adult and I really liked it and if you love powerful movies the show emotion and grit and pain but also you love to be affected by all that I say see Passion of the Christ and people who do believe they will like the movie for the obvious biblical reasons but uh people who don't believe like some people who don't believe probably won't like to see it but uh those who can look past that and just see it as a movie story, they, well, I think they could, pop, they maybe be able to like it. I really liked it. Maybe they could. And, uh... I know the movie was very controversial and the idea that it was anti-Semitic, and I, like I said, I, I don't, I haven't really read into the Bible and a lot of the stories of it. And the whole film is in two dead languages. Mel Gibson wanted it to be realistic with the time period and I feel like uh you I feel like most people like wouldn't really catch up on if there was any anti Semitism. Like from what I've read, it doesn't portray the Jews. It doesn't portray the Jewish characters in the greatest light, but from if I remember, like there were bad Jewish characters in this movie, and there were characters that were good. The only time I really noticed anything that seemed like even way back when I was thirteen that seemed bad was a scene where this guy, this character, I can't really remember the name is forced to help Jesus carry the huge cross up the hill and the soldier ordering him says to do it and then adds very hatefully Jew. That was the only time I really noticed anything but and that doesn't really come off as anti-semitic it just seems like showing a bad character forcing another character into something and the movie I say, if you can handle some brutal violence, then see this movie and decide for yourself whether or not you like it or not. And it is possible for people who don't believe in religion to like these kind of movies. Like, I'd say the movies of religion that I really don't like, I, that I, the movies of religion that I just don't see because I kind of know if I do it, it would make me very angry and piss me off or what would be called religious propaganda movies. I've never really watched religious propaganda just because I don't want to be pissed off but I feel as someone who likes to review movies I should just to have an opinion. The most I've come to actually watching religious propaganda have been reviews from Brad Jones, a.k.a. the Cinema Snob, and Diamanda Hagen. They're also internet reviewers, and they review these kind of things. And, uh... 
But yeah, and this movie, like, some people say it's propaganda, but from watching The Passion, I, if, there, if it was propaganda, I didn't pick up on it, and it didn't piss me off in that regard. Like, I, I didn't really notice any true propaganda. Like, yes, it's a very Catholic film made by a devout Catholic, and it's made for, like, it's made to appease kind of the religious crowd. But, like I said, I don't believe that what the movie says actually happened, but as a story alone, like, as a movie story of fiction, I really thought it was extremely powerful and just the, like the story itself is basis to be powerful it's only when certain people and organizations interpret the story in many ways and they becomes less about redemption and helping to being hateful and just attacking other people who don't, who didn't do anything wrong, they just choose not to believe. And, as I, and I just, I say, believe what you want to believe, or don't believe, and whatever makes you live your life better and makes you feel good, go with that, and I won't try to force my opinion on others, and just hope that others don't try to force their opinions on me, and try to force me into something that I don't want to be with, and I won't do the same. But overall, I think The Passion of the Christ is a great film, and with everything I said before, check it out if you want, or if you don't, don't see it. And now for some final thoughts. I thought Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus, did a okay job. We come down to it, Jesus doesn't really have too much of a character. But with this movie, with showing him be extremely in pain and struggling to get through everything, I thought he did a very good job. And Mel Gibson, I think he's a great director. And despite everything, I just love what he does and love him as an actor, director. I think he's great. And I guess... On a more upbeat note, I'll end this with a joke. <laughs> just because. I, I just feel like doing so. There's this cross company, and they're, they have a cross with Jesus on it, nailed to it, saying, Use our nails, they're the strongest. And someone tells them, You can't do that, it's offensive, take that down. So the next day, they just have a cross with nails, but no Jesus, and they say, you should have used ours. That's pretty much all I gotta say, and I hoped you thought this was a good movie review.